and being a part of this informative webinar where we'll be talking about what is public policy, who we are at Cotillia School of Public Policy, and why you should be considering a career or your life in the world of public policy. Now, I'd quickly like to share my screen and get started so that we can delve right in. And as promised, this would not be long, but it's definitely going to be informative. And I would love for you to drop in your questions if you have any so that we can go forward and address any queries that you may have and help you with your admission process at Cotillia as well. So Cotillia School of Public Policy, who we really are, is a school dedicated to public policy, delivering a Master of Public Policy program. Now, why public policy, you may ask, what are we really trying to accomplish over here? There may be questions on your mind. I'm going to help you through all of them, give you some clarity about why a school of public policy in today's day and age is revolutionary. But first, let's meet the team that makes up the admissions of Cotillia School of Public Policy. You have... As soon as my screen decides to move, yes, of course, you have with you the Dean of KSPP, Ambassador Syed Akbaruddin, who is a retired IFS officer and a former permanent representative of India to the UN. So with an institution that's headed by an ambassador at the helm, you can imagine the kind of quality that we are promising to deliver. Now, he's not just a former representative of the UN. He's worked with IAEA as well, had the external relations and policy coordination globally. And he's also served as a consul general of India in gender representing India. So with a man with diverse experience at the helm of education, you also have the Director of Admissions, Mr. Hitesh Kakkar, who is an awarded professional in the realm of admissions and marketing. He is somebody who has been positioned among the top 15% of digital marketing professionals and understands what communication and the right amount of direction is required to groom a student and get them on board. This is me. I am Priyanka Roy, and I am the General Manager of Admissions and Outreach at Cotillia. I'm a clinical and counseling psychologist by education, but admissions and working with students was something that always had my interest. So that's how I'm here to help you understand why public policy is the need of the hour and why you should be a part of it. Now, a lot of us have heard about public policy, but do we know what it really is? Like one of our co-founders used to say, you throw a stone and you'd find problems around our country. Solutions for these problems? Not so many. Now, each one of you may have something that you're passionate about. It could be politics, it could be the government, and it could not be anything related to that. If you're interested in finance, HR, technology, AI, data science, artificial intelligence, um, you think about biology, chemistry, medicine, environment, anything and everything around you needs policy. Now, policy is nothing more than your regulations or certain bylaws that need to be created to address larger issues. And like it said, together we can bridge a gap that is there in today's technology, sustainability, access, and opportunity, and all you need for it is policy. Now, when we talk about how policy has changed over time or what it's really bringing about, you'd see that Think about the changes that are going on in today's day and age. Um, social media is rampant. You know, things about people's personal lives without any boundaries. Um, OTT is something that has come up to fame. And it's all accessible and everything's all public and there are no bounds and limitations to it. Here's where policy steps in to make regulations that are transparent, that are clear, and helps people understand that the right amount of information needs to go through through channelized resources. Now, public policy being so diverse is an interdisciplinary collaboration. It's interdisciplinary because it's background agnostic. You can have studied a BA, BCom, BTEC, BDES, BARC, been working in some company for years on end and are looking for change. Public policy has a space for you. Now, policymakers are realizing that they don't have expertise on everything. They have probably an understanding of politics, but what about data analysis? What about communication? What about making sure that the public has the right information? Now, all of these things are lost in the crowd. And that is why we need policymakers such as yourself to come across and create environments that are no longer dominated by just governments and diplomats. Climate change and sustainability are some of the major issues that are 
there across us. It needs to be addressed, but we're not really being able to take a step towards it. Why? Because we don't have effective policies in place. So you see where I'm going with this, that you know, you could be interested in climate change, you could be working towards energy renewable sources. But at the end of the day, until and unless there aren't policies to regularize these, nothing is going to start moving forward. The same applies to mental health, the uprising of the LGBTQIA and the awareness around it. There are so many things that we can be doing for them. There are so many things we can be doing for ourselves, but we are bound by our limitations. And these limitations can be broken through public policy. So that's what I'm here to tell you, that public policy is the game changer in education in today's day and age, that irrespective of what you've studied, what you want to do, this is literally the bridge in the middle. When we've spoken so much about public policy, we're talking about why you need to be somebody who needs to be involved. Why are we reaching out to students? Why are we reaching out to professionals who have been in the industry? Well, we're reaching out to you because you are aware you're working in today's day and age. You're learning about the relevant problems in today's society. And you are at that age or at that time, irrespective of which juncture of your career you are in, to take a step and make that change. There may have been things that you wanted to do forever, but not found the platform for it. Well, we brought the platform to you and that's public policy. To give you a little bit of a heads up on what are the kind of careers in public policy? Well, they're all listed out on your screen. You may have thought that public policy is all about governments and talking about diplomats and you have to have an understanding of say political science and history, but it's really not that. Companies like Netflix, Facebook, ENY, Deloitte are looking for policy managers. You could either be working in terms of creating what their corporate policies would look like in tandem with the government. You could be working on their CSR initiatives. You could be working specifically to the government as well as an advisor to them, making policies, understanding what their campaign should be like, how their communication strategy should be like. All of that gets covered under public policy. Like I mentioned, on the environment, you could be an environment policy specialist. You could be working with climate change and sustainability. You could be working as a health policy analyst. Mental health, physical health, the regulations between pharmaceutical companies, all of them. Now, energy policy, of course, democracy, law, policy, and regulations. If you are not looking at UPSC as your ultimate go-to or you've done too many attempts and would like for an alternate path into being a diplomat or work for international relations, public policy is your stepping stone. If you're interested in research in a certain area that you may have studied, again, we encourage economists, statisticians, researchers to come forward and explore the opportunities and avenues with public policy. Nonprofits and think tanks would appreciate having public policy enthusiasts. Organizations such as uh, Teach for India or Helpline India would love to have people who understand policy and can finally give them that space and that identity that they need. So why Cotillia? Right? So as much as I can brag about the institution that I work for, the basic idea that we came with was that why should we lose our students, the brains of our country? Why should we lose them to international universities? We saw, we learned, and we took the best of what they had already established and brought it right here for you here in Hyderabad. You talk about Stanford, you talk about Harvard Kennedy, our entire curriculum is designed on their model. We bring in faculty from these institutions as well, including diplomats, politicians, policy makers, and you get an opportunity for a year long mentorship with them as well. I have listed down infrastructure and the classrooms, but I'm not gonna talk too much about it because I'd love to show you about it, but definitely would like to delve into a little bit more about our interdisciplinary learning research and development oriented curriculum, which is not your standard textbook Q&A that you learn and do. Uh, what we're doing here is basically making sure that you're learning through case studies, you're learning through assignments, you're going through and stepping into real world understanding of how policy is really happening in today's day and age. You're learning from senior advocates, from journalists, um, some of the main management is experienced professionals in this realm. And you're not just getting a textbook version of what you need to know, you're getting a real life version of it. You also get 
uh, teaching assistantship opportunities while you're on the campus. Now, as a student at Cotillia, you get to work very closely with these faculty that comes in. You get to work one-on-one -on -one with them, understanding their curriculum, understanding their network, and then taking that skill forward for your journey in your life. Well, enough said. Now it's time to show you a little bit of what Cotillia and our campus look like. Well, that is who we are at Cotillia. If I can just resume sharing my screen would be wonderful. Just give me a moment, guys. And yes, of course, it's time that I show you a little bit more about my advisory board. So when I talk about my faculty, when I talk about the people that you would be meeting, these are some of the best of the best in the industry. You have managing directors who work with research and policy hands-on. You have professors from Howard Kennedy and uh, Stanford as well. You have political campaign advisors, members of parliament, retired IAS officers, and senior advocates, and anybody and anybody that you could think of making sure that the curriculum is designed up to standards for your requirements. Now, all of your faculty as well looks like this. We, I would encourage you to go ahead and check out what our faculty page looks like on our website. But I'd also like to tell you a little bit about the programs that we offer here at Cotillia. Of course, we have the master's program in public policy, which is a two-year fully residential program, and the applications for it are open now. We'll be talking about it in a little bit after I've told you a little bit more about the executive education and PhD program. Well, these are the two new programs that we are launching this year. And educa the executive education program is a three-day certification that we have for experienced professionals. And we're opening up our doors to research enthusiasts to look at the PhD program in public policy as well. Now, the master's program in public policy and the others give you an opportunity to choose from diverse specializations. Now, these are the five specializations that we have at KSPP, which is governance and society, development economics, government and business, international relations, human rights, law and democracy. But that's not just it. You do not just have to pick one specialization. You can choose to have cross-listed specializations or just do a general MPP so that you have a little bit of understanding of everything and then choose your career path ahead depending on your area of interest. Um, a little bit about the master's program. We have a collection of mandat mandatory and elective programs that you need to choose from. At the end of the year, you do an internship. So at the end of year one, you're doing a mandatory internship so that you get a real life exposure of what public policy can bring to your table. In the second year, it's a mix of the electives that you choose and you get to make your career or your curriculum custom designed to the way that you would like to be learning. At the end of the second year, you work on a capstan project, which is basically a research project that you work on end to end. And you never know if your project is that great and a policy so relevant, you may be the one making rules and regulations for us in tandem with the government. Well, 
Our applications are now open, like I mentioned, and our application process is supremely simple. You have to fill up an application form along with your education documents, your work experience documents, in case you have work experience. Mention to us any achievements that you may have. And well, if you are looking for a scholarship, and a little bit more on that in the next slide, well, if you are looking for a scholarship, you'd have to submit your income tax return documents as proof as well. Once you filled up your application, we ask for a 500 word SOP as well. And for all of those who are interested in applying, you'll find an eligibility document and an SOP guidelines document right there for you to help you a little bit in crafting a well-rounded SOP. Now your SOP is one of the major evaluators of your candidature at Cotillia. So make sure you write that well. And if you do write that well, you get selected for a personal interview round with a three member panel. Now, these panelists are usually members of our advisory board, management and the faculty so that they can handpick you out of a crowd and give you a space in the limited seats that we have at Cotillia. If you do get selected, we give you a provisional offer letter for which you need to deposit one lakh to confirm your seat. And well, if you do that within 14 days of receiving your offer letter, your scholarship stays valid for you. I've listed out certain important dates. They're on my screen right now, but you can also find them listed out on the website. Our website is www.cotillia.org.in. I will drop that in the chat box shortly as well. And in case you have questions, keep dropping them for me so that I can address them after this. Now, well, that's a lot of information about Cotillia and what to do. Let's come down to the basics and, of course, what's most important to you. The tuition fee, like you can see, is 6.68 lakhs per annum, which comes up to about 13.36 lakhs per two years. This is without the food and accommodation that would charge you roughly about three and a half lakhs more. Um, that depends on the room that you're choosing as well. We have different slabs and different rooms that you can be choosing for. And well, you did see the kind of executive rooms that we are giving our students so that they can find a home away from home. I've been mentioning scholarships for a while. And what you can see on my screen are the various scholarship slabs that we have. Depending on your academic and your income performance, depending on what you're looking for, we offer scholarships between 33% to 100% on your tuition fee. Trust me on this, we did have more than eight students get complete tuition fee waivers and an active part of Cotillia fulfilling their dreams. So you could be one of them as well. And it's pretty simple to get there. It's also pretty simple to make your mark once you are a part of Cotillia. What you can see on my screen are the list of partners who have reached out and hired students from us. In our first year, we had the highest package of 41 lakhs with an average package of 8 lakhs for students. And you have companies across the board, whether you're interested in biotechnology, whether you're interested in electric vehicles, you're interested in finance or are looking to work with the government. There are opportunities for each and every one of you right here. Well, this is all about what I have to tell you, and I'm open to any questions that you may have about public policy and what you'd like to know about Cotillia School of Public Policy. Again, thank you so much for your patience and your understanding, because it's been great to just be able to talk to you and share everything that I have about public policy. Um, I'll take a minute and quickly jump into the questions. If you have any questions, please feel free to share them with me. Um, so I do have my first couple of questions coming in. The first one says, is it on, is it an online school? Um, well, Vishnu, it is not an online school. We are a fully residential program. So if you are choosing the two year master in public policy program, you would be living with us on campus and experiencing the full glory of the projects, assignments and the campus life with the students. If you are choosing the executive education, it's a three day certification, but that too, we are inviting people to come onto campus and understand a lot more about what life really looks like and the kind of effort that goes into being a public policy enthusiast. I do have another question here that's coming from an anonymous source though. Um, well, yes, the question goes, uh, are we looking at work X as a mandatory requirement? 
No, we are not looking at work experience as a mandatory requirement. Although, of course, if it is an added advantage if you have work X. Um, it's an added advantage because then you get to bring your skill set to the table as well. And through our mentorship program, then you can associate with people who are already working in the field. Um, explore their network, their skills, their abilities, go forward and learn a lot more about what it really takes on the ground to go ahead and uh, explore your career with public policy. What is the cost of the three-day executive program and what is the average age of the master's cohort? Well, two very relevant questions. The cost of the three-day executive program is 20,000. So that is all inclusive. Uh, once you come onto our campus, food and accommodation is taken care of. And it's a three-day executive certification with some of the top global minds. And the topic that we are focusing on this time is global risks. Now, it's risks across domains, whether we're talking about finance, we're talking about international relationships, we're talking about climate change, and also political relations and diplomatic relations across countries. The next question, what is the average age of the master's cohort? It is a relatively young cohort. The average age is of 24 years at this point in time. In the first year, we had an older batch of students where we had a couple of working professionals as well. So uh, currently, the average age for across the three batches is about 27. There is no age limit. Well, um, we are open to anybody and everybody who's interested. Last year, we had a 72-year-old journalist who was looking to do something with his time. Unfortunately, he wasn't sure about living on campus, but we were more than happy to have him there and explore the, the life of a public policy enthusiast. Um, Arun's asking me, what's the minimum package that a person can expect after the master's program? It's anywhere between 8 to 10 lakhs, Arun, because public policy in today's day and age is such a niche program that it's not so much about the money as much as the skill set that you are bringing to the table. It's a very rare cohort of individuals who are bringing a background so diverse. Now, we take students who are undergrads in BBA, BCom, BTEC, BA, BSc, liberal arts, open school students as well, as long as you're interested, as long as you have a mission that you'd like to fulfill, it's more than you're more than welcome to be a part of the cohort and then learn and explore avenues. We had an average package of more than eight lakhs this year with our first cohort and the highest package being 44 lakhs. So clearly packages are not your constraint. It is your determination to be a part and make a change is what is. Um, well, can somebody work remotely from Hyderabad and take up a master's program? You can, but it is difficult because the rigor of the program is so intense and the amount of information that we're giving you on an everyday basis is so much that it has become difficult for students to manage both. The reason being there are constant assignments that you're doing. There are book discussions that are happening. Um, there are interactions that you're having one-on-one -on -one with mentors that you choose. There are classes that happen after hours if you need any extra guidance. So it becomes difficult to manage. We are not aversive to it. We're more than happy for you to keep up your avenues. And in case you are excited about looking at working, we are giving you the opportunity as a teaching a te as a teaching assistant to be a part of the cohort, learn from your mentors, work with them, and earn a stipend as well. Well, I have another question, and this one's interesting. What's the ideal profile of a promising policy professional? Well, I think I covered a lot of it, saying that you need to be passionate. There is nothing that you can be doing right, and there's nothing that you can be doing wrong. As long as you have a mission and a vision to make change, all you have to do is be passionate about doing something. The journey is, of course, tedious. I will not say that it's a cakewalk or it's going to be easy because you are dealing with governments. You are dealing with associations that are spread across various companies. You're talking about making policies that are to be uniform, equal and relevant, most importantly, across domains. So it's not really about what you could be doing. You could be somebody who's worked 30 years as a journalist. You could have been a teacher for 15 years. You could have been a civil servant for a long time and looking to upskill yourself. You could be a fresher looking for a new career avenue. Or you could be somebody just trying out something new. 
as long as you're passionate about it, you're the right person to be a policy professional. Vishnu has another question that says, what is the ratio between internal and external assessment? Well, uh, of course, for the capstone project and when you are interning, there are external assessments that happen by people who are on the ground. Uh, most of the assessment otherwise is internal and it is evaluated by the faculty that we have on campus. Again, I would encourage you to go forward and take a look at their profiles. What I will also do is drop a link for you on the various arenas of the admission process and the faculty and the MPP program in general so that you can get to know more about us. But again, coming back, a lot of information and not the answer. There is, uh, it's going to be a 60-40 ratio of the internal and external assessment. Most of it is internal. Your external evaluation happens through people coming in for campus placements, people coming in for training, people that you would be working with as a part of your internship, and of course, your capstone project as well. If we have any other questions, I'll keep this open for another 10 minutes. Uh, if not, we will wrap this up very soon. And again, thank you so much for your participation here today. It's been wonderful to have each and every one of you and ask these questions. Uh, okay, a lot of questions coming in about the PhD program. Yes, we are introducing the PhD program this year. We are looking at a very small cohort. So uh, as soon as the applications open, we will put out a notification out there. Um, your PhD program would, of course, have to be after you've completed your master's exam. We would have an entrance exam for it, followed by the interview round, which would qualify you to be a PhD uh, scholar here at Cortelia. We do offer the PhD and... Um, it would be your standard three years PhD, which can be extendable. You would have a stipend as well. All of those details would be on our website very shortly. Of course, you can go check out the specializations. We've listed those out and the other details about the PhD process. So you can go find out, but as soon as applications are open, we'll be letting you know. Um, is it any end term kind of thing? Uh, well, we work on a tri-semester format. So in the two years, you'll be going through six semesters, where the last semester of each year would be mostly just on-field work. So it's a mix of practical learning and applied learning. So you are going out there and whatever you learn, putting it out there in the real world, experiencing it hands-on, and then taking up your chances as and when they get it. May I know about what all assistance is offered to Cotillia for freshers? Well, we have a corporate and placement cell, the CPC at our campus. Now the career fulfillment cell also helps you with training. So right now with our second years currently gearing up for their placement season, we have mentors coming onto the campus and helping them with mock interviews and the kind of job roles that they can be choosing from. For that matter, we also have a mental health professional that comes onto our campus and helps students understand where the passion stems from, what they really want to do, any assistance that they may need in preparing. A um, lot of students get anxious before placements. A lot of them get extremely worried. So, well, uh, what we are doing is trying to cover all the grounds in terms of mental health help, in terms of professional help, in terms of companies coming in and training you as well, so that end-to-end -end, all assistance is offered for the freshers and for the graduating students as well. Vishakha is asking me, the applications can be made in any of the admission cycles. Yes, they can be made in any of the admission cycles, but the only catch is that our scholarships are on a sliding scale. Uh, also, not, we won't be open for all our round deadlines if we fill up our seats, and there are only 60 seats. So the sooner you apply, the better it is. And of course, also, can an individual apply more than once in different cycles of the admission? No, unfortunately, you would not be able to do that. You can only apply once in an academic year. Of course, in case that you are not selected or for any unforeseen circumstances, you're not able to join Cortelia, we do offer a deferral or we do offer you the opportunity to join in next year by going through the application process again. I hope that answers your question, Vishakha. In case you need any more information, please feel free to reach out. <clears throat> um, there's another question that says, in a corporate, typically, where does a public policy professional fit in? Um, it would really depend. 
you, if you are interested in finance, you could fit into accounts and be uh, creating policies for the organization. You could be creating financial policies uh, within corporations or multiple companies that may, be, uh, that may be there. If you are interested, say, in something like electric vehicles, we had one of our students placed recently at Aether, and she was always passionate about EVs. Today, she is drafting policies that would be mandated between electric vehicle companies and the government as well. You could be regulating CSR activities as a part of being a policy professional. You could be advisory to the CEOs, CFOs, and CMOs of the companies. You could be working with educational institutions. You could be working with um, health and um, Oh, uh, well, health and healthcare institutions. I lost the word there for a second. So, well, health and healthcare institutions, of course, that is something that you could be looking forward to. So, it really depends on where your area of interest is. I keep saying this that public policy is such a diverse sort of a course that you could do that all you need to do is match your needs to your passion to be able to make a change. That's quite literally what public policy creates the platform for you to do. Um, I think last two questions is what I will take. I have another one here from Abhishek Challa. If anybody else has question, now's your time. Please feel free to drop them in. So Abhishek says, hello, ma'am. Is there anyone who got 100% scholarship? And if the person wants to join Cotillia and he can't afford, uh, is there any chances to study at Cotillia? Yes, yes, and yes. We've had more than eight to 10 students across our batches get 100% scholarship. Now, all you have to do is submit your income proof. That means I need your ITRs for the last two years. If you're working, it's going to be your ITRs and your parents' ITRs. If you're a fresher, it's just going to be your parents' ITRs. So we do consider a 50-50 ratio of merit and means to understand how you are eligible for a scholarship. And we do make exceptions as well. We have two dean scholarships as well that we would like to offer to our candidates. Uh, if you're exceptionally meritorious and have financial difficulties, that shouldn't be a hindrance at making change, should it? So we definitely don't let that be a hindrance. We try to accommodate as much of... Um, passionate enthusiasts as possible to give them the opportunity. And Abhishek, if you are interested, our applications are open. I think you really need to get started on your application. Um, well, Vishnu, I'm not going to divulge what are the income slabs for 100% scholarship, but definitely let me tell you, it's a very fair process. We go through multiple checks. We go through multiple uh, processes of evaluation so that nobody misses out. See, it's really not just about your academic scores. It's also about your SOP. It's also about your written communication. It's about your verbal communication. It's about you taking that step forward and saying that I really want to do this. And honestly, if you can convince us to say that you're good at it and you want to do it, we will make sure that you find a place. Rishikesh is asking me, do you have tie-ups with banks for loans? Yes, of course we do. We have uh, private banks and government sector banks that are tied up with us. As a part of Geetham deemed to be university, Cotillia gets the full range of access that Geetham does. So we are listed everywhere on government portals as well. So in case you're looking for a scholarship through, say, the Bihar Credit Scheme Fund, or you're looking at the one that Kot uh, Kolkata offers, we are tied up with them as well. So finances are never going to be your hindrance to join Cotillia, let me tell you that. Well, the bottom line is that our applications are open and you need to quickly go on to cotillia.org.in to start filling up your application. The application costs 1,000 rupees, not too much. And it really is something that you should start doing right now if you want a fair chance at 100% scholarship. I've told you about our placements. I've told you about our faculty. You've taken a look at what our infrastructure is. If you're here in Hyderabad, Give us a call. Our numbers are listed on the website and we'd be more than happy to take you around the campus as well. If you're not in Hyderabad and are still looking to take a look at our campus, we have a virtual tour that is listed up on our website. Please feel free to go through, look at our classrooms, look at what happens, see what we are trying to offer for you and just make a choice. Thank you so much, everybody, for joining me today. It has been a pleasure speaking to all of you. Um, 
It's been absolutely a delight with the number of questions. It just shows that you all are interested and you're enthusiastic. And I'm looking forward to speaking a lot more with all of you. Thank you so much for your time. Take care, everybody, and have a very, very good evening.